get this over there like a football huddle, you know? And she says, now girls, it's a long way to California. Maybe we should let them give us a ride. I'll sit in the front seat between those two. You guys sit in the back seat between those two. That way nobody can knock us in the head. <laughs> now, I don't do all the talking. You guys keep your mouth shut. Well, Amy just stood there too much. So what else is new? <laughs> I turned to Patty and I said, Patty, Mommy said we should never go with strangers. Patty shot me her look. Know that look. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, Linda and I climbed in the back seat of that car and never said a word. <laughs> but not Patty. Oh no, she started spinning a tail the likes you have never heard. <laughs> you see, we had a wicked stepfather. The wickedest of stepfathers. He beat us every single day. He gave us bread and water to eat. We had to sleep in a closet. We had to work from sunrise to sunset. I remember thinking, she's not talking about my daddy. <laughs> well, as we drove, we say, it seemed like they drove us around for hours, and I don't know if they were buying anything she was telling them, but they kept trying to convince her to let them take us home, take us to the police station. <laughs> anyway, they, they wanted to take us home or take us to the police station or call somebody. I said, no. You take us back home, we will be beaten severely. <laughs> well, probably killed. Yeah. Anyway, I, like I said, I don't know if they were buying any of it. But finally, just as quickly as the adventure had begun, Patty said, okay, take us home now. She was not going to let them take us to her, or them to our, she was not going to let them take us to our doorstep. You know, they might want to meet the wooden step up. So instead, she had to drop us off at a corner about a block from the house. We got out of that car, kitten and all, and boy, down the road and ran this way, into the dark alley, down the alley, into the yard, back into the house, back to bed. Those teenagers were no match for Patty. That's true. <laughs> the next morning, Mama saw the cat. And she said, Patty, where'd that cat come from? Without batting an eye, without missing a beat, Patty said, Mama, I heard a noise in the middle of the night when I opened the door to see what it was. That cat just ran in. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, just to make things perfectly clear, this was not an isolated incident. There were many other escape attempts that Lainey and I were not a part of. Patty may have thought she was Houdini, but just like cool hand Luke, they always dragged her home. Well, around this time, Patty's creativity began to flourish, and she turned into a real fashionista. We had this big old tree in our backyard. She'd go pull branches off of it, tie them around our waist for skirts, or her hair for hats. Or are we just walking around fanning ourselves? We also would pick poke berries, <coughs> squeeze the juice out of them, and rub them on our cheeks for root. <laughs> but never, ever on our lips. It was poison and would kill us instantly. <laughs> then we would sashay down the street like beautiful women. I imagine the neighbors were saying, there go those crazy toilet girls again. <laughs> and then there was the time she sprinkled baby powder all over the hardwood floor. And we went ice skating. Slip sliding away. Oh, how you can glide with the aid of baby powder. I think Mom almost beat us half to death that time, too. Now, Patty was also quite the entrepreneur. Do you remember that milk bottle caper? I guess the change in my pocket just wasn't enough, and I, oh, Lainey, some things really should stay in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Moving right along. Well, like I said earlier, we were a very religious family. When our parents went to church, sometimes they'd leave Patty at home babysitting us, and we played church. Patty was the choir. The whole choir. I always preached. Always on the Book of Ruth. And Linda 
testified. And testified, and testified, <laughs> and testified, and testified. Well, one day when we were home playing church, it started to rain. Now, Mama had about 50 baby chickens in a chicken pen out back. Patty decides they're going to ground. So again, like good little sisters, we followed her out to the chicken pen. And we chased every one of those little suckers down and crammed them into two little dog buddies. All 50 of them. Then we took them back into the house and we dumped them out on the floor. Now picture this. We had either scared them to death or suffocated them. It was a pitiful sight. 50 limp, lifeless, dead baby chicks. Oh, but don't worry. Patty got another brilliant idea. <laughs> we'll get Mama's sprinkler and sprinkle them with water. <laughs> that will revive them. So we got the sprinkler and sprinkled. And sprinkled and sprinkled and sprinkled. Now when our folks got home, they didn't just have 50 dead chickens on the floor. <laughs> they had 50 wet dead chickens on the floor. Do we really need to say anything about our getting whooped? <laughs> now, in May of 1955, we moved to what we call the Rock House. Now, it was made of these great big old rocks. And it sat up high on a hill and had a rocky driveway and a rocky road down in front of it. We had an old outside toilet. A two-holder. <laughs> and no running water. Unless you count Lady and me running up and down the hill. <laughs> well, that's true. That was our, our folks' idea of running water. It was our job to make sure that the uh, barrel at the half top of the house was filled every night before we went to bed so there'd be water in the morning. Many a night we forgot to get it filled up, and we'd walk down to the spring, which was down the hill, across the road, and then you dip your bucket into the water. While keeping your eye out for snakes, water moccasins. Then you have to carry it all the way back up the hill. Well, one night we forgot to bring the water in. And it was a real cold winter night. So Mama said, you guys don't have to go down and get it tonight. I'll get the water in the morning. So in the morning she got up and some begun, it snowed. So she walked outside. What she saw in the snow amazed her. There were big footprints, bare footprints. That's B-A-R-E, not B-E-A-R. <laughs> Going down the hill and coming back up. Patty had gotten thirsty in the middle of the night. So instead of taking the bucket, she grabbed the dipper. Walked down in the snow, got her drink, came back up and went to bed. <laughs> well, now by this time, Patty was turning into a fine young lady and had developed a preference for cooking and other household duties. She still babysat us and took her job very, very, very seriously. One of her duties was the laundry. Laney and I would carry the water up from the spring, heat it over an outside fire, fill the washing machine and the rinse tubs with the water, drag out the dirty clothes, sort them all out, then Patty was ready to do the laundry. <laughs> Her other duties included cleaning the house and cooking. She was a mighty fine cook. Well, let me tell you, by this time, we were getting sick and tired of her telling us what to do. So one day, she told, while she was mopping the dining room floor, she told us to do the dishes. And as we're standing there in the kitchen by the sink, we began to plot her demise. <laughs> we will, we will rock you. <laughs> I would go into the dining room and attack her from behind. We will, we will rock you. Linda would come in from the other side, and between the two of us, we would take that tyrant down. We will, we will rock you. Well, I ran into that room. I made a flying leap and landed right on the back. 
I was riding her around that dining room like a seasoned bro uh, wrangler on a bronco. <laughs> I, as I'm, she's throwing me all over the place, and I start, Linda, Linda, come on, help! Nothing. <laughs> Linda, Linda, come on, help! <coughs> Nothing. I look over my shoulder, and she is powering in the door <laughs> to the closet. Wait, 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 lady, I'm scared. As well she should have been. Patty flipped me over her head like a rag doll. <laughs> Another one bites the dust, another one can lay another one down, another one bites the dust, hey, hey, oh! Believe me, that was the last time we challenged her. Now in high school, Patty was a cheerleader and a great musician. She played almost all of the horns, almost all of the drum, drums, the, the piano, and the accordion. She could play all of those instruments by ear, but she could also read music. If she could pick it up, she could play it. And she could sing. Oh, how she could sing. She'd go into choir practice, and her instructor would say, Patty, today I want you to sing with the bass or the baritones. Or, Patty, why don't you go sing with the tenors today? Or, the sopranos are a little weak. Why don't you go join them today? Patty sang bass. Patty sang tenor. Years later, she would become Patty Paul. Oh. <laughs> that would kill me. Patty <laughs> She'd become a professional country western singer, and she sang on a show called The Town Hall Party, which was the Western Grand Ole Opry. Well, years went by, we grew up. We all went our separate ways. We got married. We became mothers, grandmothers, great grandmothers. And although we didn't see each other that often, we did keep in touch. Then in 2004, we all went to Oklahoma for Mama's 80th birthday. It was the first time since <coughs> that Mama had been with all six of her children in over 40 years. Hmm. We renewed our bonds of sisterhood and we vowed to see each other more often. And we did. We began to get together every few months, and we began to go see Mom more frequently. Our love for our mother grew, and for each other, probably because we were now mothers. We became best friends, and we also developed a more loving appreciation for our three brothers. Yeah. <laughs> we stood together, we had to put mom in the home. We stood together when our dear brother passed. And we stood together when mom died. Yes, we cried. But we also laughed. Oh, how we have laughed. <laughs> so here we are today, still standing together. And still <laughs> to honor our sister and to celebrate her 70th birthday. And Patty, we really want you to remember that no matter how cute you may become, you will always be older than us. <laughs> so, Lainey said, I know a way to end this presentation. You've got to write another poem to mark this celebration. Now, Linda, I want you to get serious. Be maudlin if you must. So clear away the cobwebs, shake off that mental dust. Well, folks, Lainey is delirious to think I can be serious. But since she's thrown the gauntlet down, I'll try my very best. We have not touched Patty's temptations. No, not alcohol libations, though she has been known to smoke from time to time. She is home shopping to an art, be it Nordstrom's or Walmart, and a target while her skills are just sublime. <laughs> Late nights out at Mr. C's, burger and chips, if you please. How she loves to make that one-armed bandit sing. Puts a dollar in the slot, pulls to see how much she's got. Hallelujah and ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> Bring her coffee from the pot. 
But be sure it's fresh and hot, and the steam must rise above her gravy bowl. Fried potatoes, fried chicken, she'll whip up right in her kitchen. Low cholesterol achievements, not her goal. <laughs> but let me tell you, a mother's pride lights up her face when she talks about her sons, Jeff and Marty, men of honor, husbands, fathers they've become. And Beth and Chevy Ann and Audra, each so special in their way, she sees how they're changing and it brings her joy every day. And that precious daughter, Sarah, and Jim, her firstborn son, they left too soon. We'll never know the things they might have done. <coughs> but wait, let's not forget her true love, Don. Why, for 30 years they have carried on a love affair so pure. Through sunny skies and stormy weather, they have faced each challenge standing together. Their love still endures. We're almost done. <laughs> Did we tell you of her courage? How she speaks up loud and strong when she believes she's in the right, though others think she's wrong? And shall I talk about her kindness? How her hands caressed my head as I lay so close to dying and she sat beside my bed? <laughs> or how she touched our mother's cheek? and held her that last day, and murmured tender words of love as Mom slowly slipped away. <clears throat> Shall we talk about her strength and her grace when times were hard, of children loved and children lost, her heart forever scarred? <laughs> no, we will tell you of her laughter, how it comes from deep inside of her quirky wit and humor. <laughs> Always quick, sometimes snide. And last, have we told you how we love her? Wrinkles, warts, and all. <laughs> and how life without our Patty would have been no life at all. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Patty. surprise me 
because I am Sergeant Major. <laughs> and I can remember when the kids were growing up and they'd say, how did she know that? I don't know how I knew it. I, I have no clue. But it's just, but you have got me for the last time. <laughs> I can read this man like a book. I can tell when he's, he's up to something or whatever, or I thought I could. <laughs> but he has blown me away this time, and when we got to the door and I said to him, what did you do? <laughs> he said, I didn't. Your kids did. I can't tell you how much that meant to me. You get to be my age, you hope your birthday is just a day that everybody forgets. <laughs> it's just a, another ring on the trunk. It's not something you want to think about or you want to remember. I hope I never forget what I feel right now. Because I am just overwhelmed. I see members of the family I haven't seen since they were little. Jason. I haven't seen Matthew in years. The rest